One fact I want to establish is this. Nobody can deny it. Nobody can take it away from you. Talking about whether you are a son of God or not is not a subject to be debated. True or false? Are you sure? It is a fact. It is given. It is settled on one side. Now, it is not to be debated as to whether you are, whether God has made you a priest and a king. Is it to be debated? Is it? See, if you are not sure, say, I am not sure. That is the first thing that we heard this morning from Reverend Oyes. So the first thing, the most important thing is for the light to come. Give me Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servant, for Jesus' sake, verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has done what? Has shined in our hearts. To do what? To give the light of the knowledge. So we've dealt with light coming. Revelation. To show you that you are a son of God. The Bible says the Spirit of God bears witness in our hearts that we are who? The sons of God. The light has come to reveal that. That's one thing. He said that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. He said, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For we have not received the spirit of this world, but the spirit that is of God, that we may know revelation, light. I am a son of God. Whether, whether, whether you are living or whether that your sonship is evident in your life or not is a different ball game entirely. Are you understanding me? The fact is that I am a son of God. Number two, the fact is that I am not a poor man. I'm a rich man. Whether you whether you are walking in it or living in it is a different ball game because he said for we know the grace for we know the grace of the Lord Jesus though he was rich he became poor that you might become rich is that true is that settled yes whether I am living in affluence in prosperity or that is a different ball game entirely are you understanding my point? We are not going to be arguing that. You may be poor sleeping under the bridge and you are born again and you are a child of God and you are, you are a son of God, you are a prince. By his stripes, you have been healed. Whether you are living in health or not, is a different matter entirely. I want us to establish this. Because if you don't, don't establish it, we can't move further. We can't move from here. Where the challenge is, where the challenge is, is if I am the son of God, and as a son of God, all that belong to the Father is what? Mine. 
why is it that I am not manifested it? Is it not a concern to you? Is it not a challenge to you? Is it not? That's what we want to deal with today. He said, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the words. But yet, you've not seen that power being evident in your life. So what's the problem? That's why, first of all, let this light. The light we talk about brings the knowledge. It reveals this truth to you. I've said when you read the Bible, when you pick up the New Testament book, it starts with the first synoptic gospel. The first synoptic gospel, the book of Mark 2, Mark, Luke, and John. This four book tells us that we are the Son of God. Jesus Christ has made it to what Jesus Christ had accomplished for us. Now, you go to the book of the epistles, the writings, the letters. It shows us how we may realize these things, how we may walk in them, how they can become a reality in our lives, how we can manifest them, the things that we need to do in order to realize this in another way James put it captured it this way faith must be with works in order for it to be perfect there's what the Bible calls perfect faith for faith to be perfect it has to be with what works so faith is that I believe that I am the son of God the works is what I need to do in order to experience it in my life. James chapter 2, 16. He said, one of you may say, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and be and feel notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, but are the profit. Even so, if it had not works, he is what? Dead. Being. If you just claim that you are a son of God and there is no works with it, that your sonship is useless is dead. It's like a body without a spirit. Are you seeing the importance of this other aspect? Because you can be a son of God and still you are. You can be a prince and you'll be trekking and slaves will be riding on horses. That's what he's saying here. If he does not have works, That's why I ask, is there anybody here in this auditorium that is not a son of God? The answer is no. So, what do we need to do in order to become it indeed? That we will begin to live as sons and daughters of God. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. Verse 18. Yet a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. He show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You believe there is one God. You do well. Satan also believes, but he doesn't have faith. He doesn't have works. But will thou but will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is what? Dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? 
See thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. As the scripture was fulfilled when he said, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called a friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith alone. Likewise also was not Rahab the hallowed justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is what? Dead. And that is what we are experiencing in our Christian work every day. We don't add faith. We don't add works to our faith. So it is as good as nothing. And that is the reason why somebody... If you, don't, if you don't do something, that is, he said, faith without works is there. So he said in Philippians 2, 12, he said, walk out your salvation. The salvation has been provided. He said, walk it out. In other words, make it become a reality in your life so you can experience it. Because if you just say that you're a child of God, you're a son of God, you're born again and all of that, you will be living like a pauper all the days of your life. But this is what God has done. There's nothing else God can do. He has done it. You can't improve on your sonship. You are, son, you are a son of God. You are a son of God. That is why that elder brother of that prodigal son, he was a son of God, but he didn't do anything about it. But the other one realized that he was a son of God and he did something about it. So faith is made perfect by works. So I want to I want to pull one our sonship. All the things I said, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to we're going to deal with it. The first one, you are the son of God. What does it mean to be a son of God? It means that everything that the father has, all the estate belongs to you. Is it not? So you can you can't say you are a poor person. You can't call yourself a poor man. And if you are going about carrying yourself and behaving and acting like a poor man, what you are doing is that you are slapping and rubbing it on the face of Jesus Christ and seeing that what he did has no consequence in your life. That is why the Bible says that unbelief is an evil heart. The Bible calls it an evil heart of unbelief. That is you are saying that Jesus Christ, what he did for you on the cross of Calvary to be able to get all these things for you, that you don't trust it, you don't believe it, that you are still a poor man. And that's why the Bible said that by that, you make God a liar. That's why anything that is not of faith is sin. You discredit the work of God in your life. You discredit the work of redemption by speaking contrary to what Jesus Christ had done. It's a very dangerous thing to do. Unbelief is there. That's why if you read, read the book of Revelation in 21, he, said, he mentioned the, the kind or caliber of people that will never smell heaven. One of them is the unbelieving. I hope you know. Revelation chapter 21. Is it 21? Verse 8. See, but the what? The, fear, the, the fearful and unbelieving. 
the abominable murderers, warmongers, that is adulterers, sorcerers and idolaters, and all liars. They have their part where? In the lake. So you can be a Christian born again and you get to hell because of your unbelieving. Because you discredit the work of redemption. It's a very dangerous thing. That's why ordinary double mind, you have your mind is too, you are not made up and you are still not sure. The Bible said, let that man expect to receive anything from God. Because the work, you see, we are not, it's not, it's not to be debated, it's not to be argued, it's not to be, you know, all those things, some of the, sometimes because they are all everywhere on the, on the um, um, <coughs> internet space. You go there, you see all sorts and all of that. And sometimes you buy into them and then join them. It's not, these are facts. Jesus Christ, sometime more than 2,000 years ago, the Son of God, he left heaven. He came down here for a reason. And what he did was to redeem man back to God and to give man what he lost and to restore man back to his original position before. Who is the Son of God? and made peace with God, and you ascended with him in the heavenlies, and you are seated with him at the right hand of the Father. He did all that. It's not to be debated, it's not to be questioned, it's not to be argued. It's not a subject of debate. If after being the son of God and you are saved poor and all of that, it's not God's problem. If you are suffering in sicknesses and diseases and all of that, it's not God's problem. By his stripes, you have been healed. We must settle this. We must make sure. It has to be settled and settled and settled. Not to be revisited. Not to be sitting down here arguing whether you are the son of God, whether Jesus Christ is the son of God or whether he's God or not. We've passed that era. What we, are, what we should be concerned with now is how do I actualize this in my life? Because you can't begin to talk about how to actualize it when you don't believe that you are a son of God. Am I being understood? Galatians chapter 1, chapter 4, verse 1. In this verse, he opens up what we ought to do in order for you to manifest your sonship. Now I say that the heir, hmm? the heir, how many of you are heirs? If you are a son of God, then you are an heir, an heir of God with Jesus Christ, okay? Now I say that the heir as long as he is a child, there is no difference between him and who? A servant. Although you are the son, you are the heir. Everything belongs to you. But the reason why you cannot enter into that your sonship is because of what? Because of what? I can't hear you. Because you are who? a child. That's why you cannot get it. That is why they are robbing you of your rights and your privileges. And you can't talk. Because a child has little or nothing to do. You talk, you slap him, you beat him. You will keep quiet. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant. Though he be 
Lord. But he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, when we were children, we are in bondage under the elements of the world. So here, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of what? Now that you are sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Yes, Abba. But you see, that your sonship, you cannot experience it. The reason is because he gave us the reason in verse 1. Because we are sons, we are children. So the question now is, how do children behave? Children, they do not know the value of what you place in their hands. A child will see you now with this phone. He will collect it from your hand and will be playing with it. He can drop it on the ground. The thing will break. Very, they don't know. So, you play and live like a child. You know Esau. You know why Esau didn't get there? It was the same problem. The Bible said that Esau was a profane man. What is, it, what is profanity? What does profanity mean? Somebody who do not value he doesn't value spiritual things. He doesn't value his position. He doesn't value who he is. So, they now say to him, he was hungry. He came to his brother. And the brother said, he said to his brother, give me yam porridge that I'm hungry. The brother now said, give me your birthright and I'll give you young porridge. So what did he do? Did you hear what he said? He said, of what use is bet right to me? Of what use is it to me? Take the bet right, give me children. He didn't value it. That is the reason. Galatians 4.1 tells us what the reason is. Is a problem with son. We don't want to know. Another example is the children of Israel at Mount Sinai. God told Moses, tell them, sanctify yourself, wash your clothes, do everything, come, because I'm going to speak to you as Father speaks to his children. And he gathered them. And when God began to speak, he said, no. We don't want to be hearing direct from, just go and hear for us. So whatever you hear, come and tell us who we do. Second hand. So what it means is that anybody can come and tell them anything, any cock and bull story, they will buy it. And they don't want to have a connection to their father. Speak to them. Children. That's how they behave. The problem, because you see, until the fullness of time comes, when you are mature, when you know the value 
you know you can hello you know you can you can stay on the steering carry your child I think it is uh, Daniela that did it Daniela did it all if did it when they were small I will be on the steering carrying them you know what they will do they will be struggling with the struggling over the steering with you so I did an experiment one day with them but where I did it was a wide a broad road there was no vehicle coming and all of so I said okay he carried the steering you know what he did? He just turned it in like this. I wasn't on the speed. I was moving slow. He just turned it. He didn't know what he did. I removed him. He started crying and fighting for the steering. He doesn't know the value. Profanity. Profanity. Because if you value what you are giving, if you value your sonship, it is when you begin to carry yourself as such, the manifestations of it, when your father sees the level of maturity in you, how you handle the things that are given to you, he said, if you are not faithful in that which is little. He will not give you bigger things. You will not step into it. But we trifle with it. We mess with it. God help us. You have a small generator. I better pass my neighbor. That one, you draw it. He watches you to see how you tend that generator, how you handle it, how you take care of it. If you're not able to take care of it small, he can, God will not allow you to have a bigger thing. He will not. He cannot. He cannot. He will pray and pray and pray. He won't let you have it. He won't promote you. He won't lift you. This is our problem. As per whether we are sons, yes. But are we walking in it? No. Reason childishness. What does it mean? Profane. Not valuing what you have. If you're not faithful in that which is little, manage it. A bigger one will not be given to you. It's like uh, it's like Mrs. Antonia. Jeremiah. Just say, Mommy, there's something. Just maybe after the meet, after the program, you get to him. He said, Mommy, there's something I want to tell you. He said, What is it? He said, I want to get married. You see what you are saying, doing now? That's what you will do. You will just laugh. From where? What? You, you yourself, you'll be dumbfounded. True or false? So why will you be? Why will you be laughing? What will be your reason? What did he know about my? You have to finish school, and then grow up, and then mature. Understand what it means to be a man. Understand how, because when you don't do that, bigger you can't. 
Okay, let me ask you. If they give you 100 million naira now, what are you going to do with it? You will sleep in the night. Hello? In the night, you will not sleep. We're not talking about if the 100 million naira is inside your room. We, that one, if, let's not go there. If that 100 million naira physical is inside your room, let's not talk about what will happen. Just that you have it is in your account. Hmm? Is in your account. You will sleep in the night. But somebody like Dangote can have one billion naira under his bed. And you are knocking at his door, he's snoring. Why? It's as simple as that. So sometimes you go to God and you say, God, I want to do this, I want this, and God will just look at you. He won't give it to you. He will not. There are certain things He will not allow to come your way. Even some of us who are ladies, you want to get married. You are crying, you want to get married and all of that. He won't give you a husband. You know why? Because he, your father, is the one that will give because women are giving in marriage. God knows that you are not. It's just like somebody comes to my house now. He says he want to marry Debbie, my daughter. I will not. Two or three people had come in the past to marry Daniela when she was in secondary school. Because we were in the house one day, my wife, I was just talking with her, she said she left, went outside, stayed for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and then later she came back. And then she continued talking. I said, where did you go? Well, we are talking here, you left. He brushed it aside and changed the topic and continued talking. I said, no, why, where did you go to? So he happened, later he now said, it was, is it not one man that came? He said he wants to marry Daniela. So she knew what I was going to do. So we didn't even have a discussion about it that was the end. You know why? Because Daniela doesn't know her right from her left. She was not ready, it wasn't matured. It's maturity always latching on people, depending, pray. You cannot, you cannot grow. You cannot get to that extent where you can speak. You are a son. You have the right. As many as have received him, to them, he gave what? Power to become. That power, use it. No. Develop and be have that confidence. Come to the knowledge, the realization that this is who you are and all. And you can do it. Fear. This is our problem, brothers and sisters. There is nothing else. It's not complicated. When I read my Bible, I try as much as possible in presenting the truth of God. I try as much as possible to present it in a very simple, understandable way way. Not just complicated. You see all this in the you hear? You go to the internet and the social media, YouTube and all of that. You hear all men of God and this one you say, do this one for 17 days. Do this one for 30 days. Do this one for this. Do this and leave all those things. You do a, a, a gate of time. Do this one. Do all that. How many of them are rules and regulations? Do's and don'ts. 
The problem is that you are not yet matured. And even in your prayer, when you pray, we see the way you pray. You see, God is your father. The way you talk to your father, and you, you pray from the point of fact that I am a son. God is my, all that the father has is mine. So I'm not begging. I'm not going to before him and be crying. What did he say? Well, can you read Hebrew chapter 4 verse 16? What did he say? What did he say if you are coming to him? Come with what? So why is it that you need to cry? Cry out to, cry out to, cry out to God. You know, we've heard it from some people. We liked it. So we're re using, repeating that word. We use it in prayer. Cry out to God. Cry out. Ah, God! Because if you say cry out to God, ah, God! Oh, God! There is God. Oh. It's what we have everywhere in the body of Christ. I say the day you will make a mistake and come where I'm doing my personal prayer. Hmm? The day you will stumble to me, to my place where I'm doing my personal prayer, you will think that I'm talking to somebody. You will think there is somebody beside me that I'm talking to. But if you open the door, you notice that there's nobody. I'm conversing, talking to somebody. You think there's somebody, maybe I'm on the phone talking to somebody. Sometimes my wife will enter the room. And she will just look like this and go back. And then later, she will say that she came to my room that I was on the phone. I said I wasn't on the phone. I was talking to someone. I said I wasn't on the phone. I wasn't talking to anybody. So I said I was praying. <laughs> I was talking to him. Like the father speak to the son. And when you finish that kind of confidence, hey, son, when we when people pray, you see whether they are still children or whether they are sick. That's why at every turn uh, pray for me. You talk and talk when you finish, pray for me. You see them, they will line up. There is one my wife tells me, he said the person is a pastor's wife. Her husband is a pastor, she's a pastor's wife. And they have been pastors ever before she was even born. But every time she will be calling her, she'll be calling my wife to pray, to pray for her children, that her children is about to go back to school. That my wife should pray. She's a pastor's wife. That my wife, my wife is also a pastor's wife. And she was a pastor's wife before my wife. What is the problem? Childishness. Refusing to mature. You won't see it. God will not allow you. That's why when you hear we are the sons of God, you brush it aside. Because you know it's not a reality in your life. When I know, I know that I'm a son of God, there are certain things I cannot say. There are certain things I cannot do. There are certain places I cannot go. There are certain people I cannot unite and I cannot. There, for the fact that I'm a, because I'm a, a mature. If he's a child, he says, Mommy, Mommy, Daddy, I want to go and play. I want to go and join this world. I want to go and play. He can, on a Monday morning when he's supposed to go to school, he's in front of TV watching cartoon. And then you want to pull her out to go and uh, get ready and go to school. What would, do, what would she do? You start crying. 
that she would prefer to sit down in front of the TV on Monday morning when every other person is going to school to sit down there and be watching cartoon. This is children for you. So when somebody is no longer monitoring you, chasing you, calling you, you are a child. Those things that are freely given to you, you will not realize them. Because everybody, you want, we want, they will, ma, ma, is it micromanage and macromanage? They will be managing you. If, 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 if your leader is not there, if the pastor is not there, I service. Hmm? If the pastor is not there, they will bolt out. They won't do anything. The moment they know that the pastor is coming and all of it, everybody will not, they just gather together and they start. Children, you can never step into those things. You can never. They will force you. Why didn't you come to church? Why? We are still sending text messages. After being born again for two years, for three years, they are still sending text messages, calling you on the phone to be in church. You are a child. You can't step into this dimension. It's our problem. A son. Hmm? A son. You can't go late to your father's business. Can you? Working with your father in father's business. You see that first son of that prodigal guy, the other brother. You know, remember what he said to his father? He said, I have not offended your commandment for once. That's why you wake up on a Sunday morning, for example. Service is by 9 o'clock. You are strolling in by 9.30. You are strolling in by 9.15. You are a child. You can give yourself all the reason on planet Earth. You are a child. You are not mature. You might be seven. I went to a church where they call me to come and preach. In this Lagos. You know the church is a fellowship. I went there. The service, they said I'm going to preach, start preaching by 10 in the morning. So the service is going to start by 9 o'clock. Trust me. I was there. 8, 8.30. I came there, I sat down. I was the only person in the hall. 8.30, there was nobody. Quarter to nine, the person that is arranging the camera and all of that came. Did cha-cha-cha-cha-cha and then. Nine o'clock, there was two or three people and they were just walking up, and I just sat down. I'm the one to pray. Service was going to start by. The owner of the ministry, the one that is whatever, 9.15, he wasn't there. 9.30, he was. When he came, when he finally came, he sat down. He brought out his phone. What he was doing with the phone, I don't know. So I held myself, I just kept quiet. And when it was, we finished and did everything that you are doing, and when it was time, they called me to come and preach. I climbed the pulpit. If you invite me to a meeting, you won't invite me the second time. And that was the first and the last they invited me. And the wife told my wife, <laughs> he said the day I came, <laughs> that I flogged everybody. 
including the man, the man, the, he was sitting down there. I said, you say you are a Christian, now you are born again, and you are mature. Look at the time you are called. God, God. They were there looking at me. See, I said, that is, the, I told them, I said, that is the problem that we have in the body of Christ. See, tomorrow now, he said, God, he said, God, he said, you see vision, you see this one, you didn't see the other one, and look at what we are doing. That's why the house of God, God is a, God is a, they, that's why, if you see what they, the impression they have about God and all of how they be, children, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how long you have been in the ministry. You can be there, born again for the past 80 years. And you have a big ministry and all of that. God is not in it. God is angry. The fear of God is not there. We don't regard God. We don't respect God. It's because Esau did not have one single atom of fear. The things that his father told him to do, where he told him not to go and marry, that is where he went to marry from. disobedient children. How do you step into God will not have, because he's, the Bible tells us that God has blessed us with what? Spiritual blessings where? In who? It's Christ that releases it. He's the one that releases it. If he sees you are not ready, he will not. What we want, the kind of thing we see in the body of Christ is, you can, if some of you here, I watch you, I see all the things you do. In the presence of God, you bring out your phone. Apparently, is it that you are playing game? Is it that they are playing game? Is it that they are playing game? Game, this game thing. Or, WhatsApp, or Instagram, or YouTube. Whatever. That's what they are doing. In the presence. You are a child. You are a baby. I say you are a baby. The manifestation of the glory and the power of God. You will not be evident in your life. Your words will not have power. You know the kind of rascal. Go to other, go to churches. Go to so many other churches. See what happened. See how the church is. In the presence of, if it were in the Old Testament, if it were in the Old Testament, the, God would have killed all of them. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not lying. If it were in the Old Testament, many of the, many people would have died. Is it not in the church and all of that? Yeah, praise worship is going on. You are dancing and you are doing like this. Praise worship. Is evil. Children. You can mature. Power you will weld. I'm not talking about power come out in Jesus. That's not what I'm talking about. You can command the power. You can't command the glory of God. You can't command the virtues of God. You can't command it. Because that is what distinguishes you from the rest of the princes. That's what distinguishes you from the rest of the people. As long as you are a child, there is no difference between you and the servant. Although you are the Lord of everything, you just be looking at it, but you can't eat it. You know how that you are a wealthy man, you are a multi mortal, but you have a problem with your liver or kidney. They say, they say the doctor say, the only thing that you can be eating now is pap without sugar.
Have you heard it before? Yes. You drink pap without sugar. So every day, that's what we'll be drinking. <laughs> you have everything. You'll be seeing food. They will be packing, cooking food. The thing will be smelled, but you can't eat it. <laughs> Son, in the house. You can't eat in your house. Where did the money come from? You, your money. They bought it, cooked. People gathered. <laughs> when they are serving people, you are putting it in a special plate and all of that, covering it and serving. What? And they will put your own cover. What is inside that part? Inside that whatever. Pop without sugar. <laughs> and you won't tell anybody. Oh. Pop without sugar. Try it when you get home. Pop without sugar. And that's what you are going to continue to be eating. How did he get there? Messing up big time. You know, you see, that is why when I, because even if, I think it was last week. Today is what? Friday. I think it is, yeah, it was today. It was this week. Somebody still told my wife that I, I am preaching against prayer. Somebody still told my wife. Either Monday or Tuesday. I think either Wednesday. She came back on Tuesday. I think either it was on Wednesday. She was telling me. Yes, it was on Wednesday. I was in her room. We are talking. He said somebody told her. So she was shouting at the person. He said, my, my, my pastor cannot say that. But that's what the person believed. Do you know why? It's because of this same thing that I'm saying. Prayer, 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 prayer. Oh yeah, continue praying. When you have finished praying, let me see your life. I say you that is talking, you pray more than me. You fast more than me. But I am better than you in terms of the quality of life. Because these are the things that I pay very great attention to. So that the little prayer I will offer, the little prayer I will make, it catches fire. Heaven hears it. I have the ears of heaven. That's why when I any, come to the church, come to my house, every single thing, I enter the kitchen, you know, me, I enter the kitchen, I open the pot, I look, I say, who is eating this food? He says, so you are the one that eating all this food by yourself alone. I called the person by name. You would think I wanted to tell him. I said, have mercy on yourself. Anything that is out of place, it must be put together. I don't want anything that is supposed to be on the table. you find it in the, the wrong place. No. Who removed this and put it? That's how sons behave. You come to church here, yeah, every single thing. I and that's why I say when I enter the church, I go around, I go around, I look around. You see how the people, everything is scattered upside down. I say, who did this thing? Why is this thing like this? Why is this thing like this? I know that is why they are criticizing me and saying all kinds of things, but I don't care. Can you look at Jesus Christ when he rose from the dead? What was he going to do with graveyard cloths? What was he going to do with it? But you know what he did? He took time. Went to one corner of the whatever and kept it. And the Bible took note of it and recorded it very well. He fed 5,000 people 
the crumbs that fell on the floor. You know what he told them? Gather everyone. They gathered it, 12 baskets. Was he going to give them, were they going to eat it the next day? Please tell me, were they going to eat it? Eh? So why did he tell them to gather it? Tomorrow you are asking God, give me 10,000, give me 100 million, give me this one, give you that one. He won't give you. Because you are not faithful in the little. Because you are still a child. I'm talking, some people, give it to me. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. If you're not faithful, he that is faithful in that which is what? Is also in much. And he that is unjust in the what? Is also in the much. children because as a son you are a big boy hello you know you are a big boy somebody calls comes around and say uh, Isaac half an hour say please can you just give me 50k you bring out your phone where is what's the account number I'll give it to you next week where's the account number he will press it and say, okay, he's saying. He will put his phone back in his pocket and walk away. That's how he big boy. <laughs> but when you come and say, Mike, um, I need, I need, I need, uh, I was telling them in the church, they say, there are certain people, when, sometimes I will need 1,000 naira, 2,000 Um, Please come, give me 1,000 naira. I don't have. Pastor, I don't. He will be doing like this. Why are you, what is the meaning of this? <laughs> I said, stop that. You, you never have. He said, Pastor, I have. I said, go, yeah, give me. Next week, next month, next time, I will have a need. 1,000, 2,000. I call me and say, please, Give me 1,000 naira. Ah, Pastor, I don't have I don't. Uh, He started looking. <laughs> Why? I now called him. I said, but I, they just paid you your salary. What did you do with him? You can't give an account. Can't explain it. children. You want to be buying a sweet, sweet, sweet. If you, if you give a 100,000 naira a child, he will use it and buy popcorn, buy tom tom, buy ice cream. Finish the 100,000 naira. If you ever carry him or her to a grocery store or supermarket or if you see the kind of thing, you, uh, chocolate, Biscuit. That's what it will be. You can't grow up. That is why when somebody looks at you, he wants to give money. He will give you tachere money. 500 naira. He said, you tell me, sir, I say, I have a need. I just need you to help. please help me. And all. He said, yeah, I don't have. He bring out 500 naira again. If I call you on the phone and I'll approach you and say, I need some money and all of that. You know your heart will break first because of the kind of money that I, you think that I'm asking you for because it's going to be big. How many of you have given a beggar 5,000 naira? See a beggar on the phone. He's begging. You bring out 5,000 naira. How many of you have given beggar 5,000? How many of you have given him 4,000? What about 3,000? 
<laughs> what about 2,000? Beggar. How many times have you given a beggar 2,000? How many of you have given beggar five, uh, 50 naira? <laughs> How many times? <laughs> we are the cause of our problem, more. honestly speaking. It's, the problem is not, it's not too much praying. It's too much praying. It's not too much fasting. You can believe anything you want to believe. Go, go ahead and believe it. I don't care. I'm telling you the truth. It's not too much praying. It's not too much fasting. The principal thing is wisdom. In all you are getting, get understanding. He didn't say the principal thing is prayer. He didn't say the principal thing is fasting. He didn't say in all you are getting, get fasting and prayer. He said get what? Wisdom. Wisdom grows you. Whether you are watching me or not watching me, whether in a private place, when I travel or when my wife travel or when I stay in my alone and all of that, I behave myself. All those nonsense and foolish stuff, they don't enter my head. I discipline myself because I know I'm a child. I'm a son of God. I'm a prince. I told him, I said, my name is P.O.P. Prince of Principalities. That's who I am. I comport myself. I don't meddle with. Have you ever seen ego? Have you ever heard that ego eat dead meat? Eh? But the Bible says you shall mount up with wings as well. So you're an ego. How come you're an ego and you're eating dead meat? Ego, they don't eat dead meat. These are the things. We just be talking about big, big, big things. Big, 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 big. Yeah. That's why I started by establishing the fact that are we God's children? Yes. It means that all this in our, our disposal. Yes. Are we enjoying them? No. Why? The Bible gives us the answer. Because we are what? Children. Until you grow up, until you're mature. Is that clear? Is that clear? Can we move on to the next one? Power. I command in the name of Jesus, come out. It's not by shouting. It's not by, in the name of Jesus. Jesus is not suffering from hearing problem. Mm -mm, he is not. You can mutter it under your breath. In Jesus' name. It's not by shouting. Why was my wife able to address that situation and obey him? Can I tell you the reason now? Hmm? Power flows through authority. Did you hear what I said? Power flows through what? is through authority. Some of you that say the things you say and do the things you do, <laughs> it's just that I don't want to. I love Pastor David. My pastor, I love him. You will see somebody you are Behaving, misbehaving, thinking that uh, he heard that you are murmuring and you are complaining, and uh, he will keep quiet, he will leave you. What he will do when there is a, a program and he's ministering to people, uh, casting out devils and all of that, 
you will see this one. He will call, he say, come, 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 come. They handle this one, deal with it. He will do it. He knows what he will tell you, you go and do it. He will continue doing another, he's watching you. <laughs> You'll be struggling with the person, demon. Because you can't cast it out. Didn't the Bible say, in my name, you shall do what? You can't cast it. Power flows through authority. Authority of God, the ultimate power and authority is who? After God. After Jesus Christ, the church. Eh? After Jesus. Because he gave all these to the church. Then you come to the church, the institution, divine institution that God ordained. Eh? You come to that local church. I'm not talking about every church. The local assembly, that local assembly. He has his structure there. And then you come in, you rebel against that constituted authority. You speak evil against the authority. He will leave you. The name of Jesus does not, he can't, you can't break his authority and then turn around and use his name. It can't happen. You know why my wife was able to do that? Because my wife is under authority. Under my authority. If I tell her, come, she will come. If I tell her, sit down, she will sit down. If I tell her, don't move, she will not move. If I tell her, don't do this, she will not do it. That's why you heard her today. You didn't hear. She said, do you hear when she said that I said, Anywhere you want to go, whatever you want to do, anything. Have you, did you hear her say that? Yes. It's because she was on, she had been under authority. So I said to her, I told her, I said, nothing in this life, no crash, no accident, no nothing will happen to you. You know where I'm talking like that? Because she's under authority. And I myself am under Christ. You can't break or the chain of authority and you use that name. It will not work. You can't be in rebellion because rebellion is Satan's domain. It is a definition of rebellion. Satan. You can't join camp with him and then want to use the name of Jesus Christ to do it. That's why he say, in Jesus' name, come and say, Paul, I know, Peter, I know, who are you? You criticize me, you speak evil against me, you look at me, look down on me in contempt, you gossip and say all kinds of things behind me and all of that. No problem. And worst of it all is that if you happen to be a pastor, because you are going to be confronting them every day, demons and Satan, they will be slapping you every day. You can't do anything. You can't bind them. You can't stop them. The name of Jesus Christ won't work. Authority and power, which one is bigger? Hmm? Line up and see what will happen. Stay under authority. When you see a woman that is not submitted to her own husband, she doesn't have power. She doesn't have authority. It's an accident going to happen. Because you have authority over your head. That authority is a covering. Okay? So you move outside of that authority. You expose yourself. That's why the Bible said to the women, 
do not uncover your head. Cover your head. He didn't say hair. Head. Stay under authority. Stay under your husband. He said because of what? Because of the angels. You move out of authority. You expose yourself to every sort of satanic manipulations. You will hear lying spirit. They will tell you lies. You will believe it. And why they will even tell you those lies and you believe it is because you have moved away from your authority. Either that you have been criticizing or you have been murmuring. You know why the Bible said they murmured against God in the wilderness. How many of them died in a day? 20,000 slaughtered, murmuring. So we wonder why the name of God or the name of Jesus Christ is not working. And this thing is in the heart. You can carry it in your heart. There is nobody, I didn't steal your money. I didn't rob you of your money. I didn't come into your house if you're a married person and take your wife or tell you or you usurp authority over you. There is nothing that you and I are fighting for. I didn't break any of your whatever. I don't know why you now decided you are going to be angry with me. Is it because I am a pastor? My hands are clean. I want you to stand up and say, this is why I am against you. My heart will always break. My heart, my, 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 the palpitation of my heart will begin to beat, beat faster. When somebody say that I preach heresy and all of that, I'm worried, I'm, I'm concerned, I become afraid. I don't want that kind of, because I know my kind of a person. So that's why I take the pain. Of course, like father, like son, because that is how my, that, my spiritual father, my pastor raised us, the Bible, the word. And he taught us about being under authority. He preached it and preached it for over two years. At a point, we say, is it that we don't, you don't have any other message you want to preach? Every time, divine authority. Every time, rebellion. Every time. Then one day, that person that he's targeting, that he used to be my friend in the ministry. We are together. One day, he called him. He said, there was a program that was going on. He said, I want you to preach on rebellion. <laughs> he gave him the topic. <laughs> Pastor David, <laughs> I said, my, my God. And the guy was bold, though. <laughs> he, he was bold. He carried the Bible. Turn with me to the book of... That's how he talks. Turn with me to the book of Malachi chapter 2. When he talks, you will look at the pastor. <laughs> you cannot do that. Rebel against God. He's a, he said, humble yourself under the... And do what? Resist the devil and he will flee. When you don't submit, you can't resist. Satan will not go. And you cannot decree it. Didn't the Bible say you shall decree a thing and it shall be established? So why is it that we're not decreeing it? And why is it that I declare and decree? How do they say it again? I, de I, I, decree, I decree and I declare. You know, it's, it's heavy. So you've learned it. I decree and I declare that today, everybody will be shaking. After decreeing and declaring, where the thing where you don't decree? Where the thing where you don't declare? Where they day? Nowhere. This month, they will be sending me. He say, this month is the month of your rising. I will type, I say, last month you told me. That this is the, that that month was the month my month of uh, shining forth that I haven't shined on. 
Now you are saying another one. From that day, the person stopped sending. <laughs> Is your month of shining forth? I said the one you said last month. I have not seen it. We are the one, we are the cause of our problem. We are the one. Wouldn't you want a situation whereby, don't you like whereby something is going on like this? You just show up. He said, Father, in the name of Jesus, let the peace of God rest upon this young man and let him be peace and still. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you get to the door, the guy is fine. Or maybe later they call you and told you that, wow, wouldn't you be happy? It's as simple as that. You don't have to shout it. It's not in the shouting. But if there is occasion for you to shout, you shout. But it's not in the shouting. And it is not in saying it gently. It is the spirit behind it. Are you under authority? Pastor will call you and send you do X, Y, Z. You say, yes, pastor. Yes, pastor. Yes, pastor. Days later, have you done it? No. And then I will call you on the phone. You will see my phone call. You know why I'm calling you? What I told you to do, you have not done it. He pinua the phone. <laughs> you will switch it off. You will decline. Some of you now have decided, you know in WhatsApp, when you send a message, the person receives it or reads it, you will know. You know what they've done? There is a, there is a system where <laughs> privacy setting. So if you send a message, whether he has seen it or not, you will know because it will just be, uh, turn off what? Uh -huh. You turn it off. Uh -huh. So without you are secured. <laughs> you know what you are doing. Yeah. You know they lie. You know go feed cheat spirit. They know they cheat spirit. You can't. Tomorrow you turn around and you wonder why. These things are no work. There are laws, there are principles. When they say to Jesus Christ, teach us to pray, what did he say? When you pray, say, Our Father, uh -huh. that is the first thing first. What is the first thing that you must do? You hallow the name of the Lord. You don't use the name of the Lord in vain. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Then, when you want to pray, oh my gosh. You insult his name. You are, see, his name is sacred. They know they use, they know they play game with that name. Is don't just go there. Leave that in a leave it alone. Don't go there. Where all this, oh my gosh, oh my God, my my gosh, my gosh, my whatever. Where is it coming from? From the world, is it not? It has entered the church, is it not? You and you, you, you use it. How many of you say that? Repent oh, by raising your hand. You don't want to repent. Oh my gosh. And then tomorrow you want to pray in the name of the same God. He said, Do the name of the Lord must not be used in vain. You must not make caricature that name. You must not make joke with that name. You must not, you must not use that name in any whatever at all. Leave it the way. Ibo calls that name Chineke Jesu. 
Yoruba calls him Olorun. Call it the name that your tribe calls him. If you call him the English name, Jesus Christ, he's a Lord. You don't use the name of that man in vain. Don't be flippant with that name with your mouth. Revere that name. If you don't do that and you are using that name, it will not work. It no go work. Should I tell you why? You can drink anything that is deadly, it will not hurt you. Hmm? Should I tell you the reason why you can pick up serpent? It won't do anything to you. Should I? You put poison in the dream. I'm not aware of it. It's not the one he said, I want to show you who I am, that I'm a son of God. Put poison inside this thing and give it to me to drink. If you put poison, you drink it, you will die. Before you finish drinking it, you are dead. <laughs> Jesus said to Satan, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Because he told him, he said, jump down from the pinnacle if you know you are the son of God. So you don't tempt God. And all trying, we are coming here to as a, we are a stupid, he's a stupid boy. If you pour hot water, boiling water inside this, hmm? you bring a piece of metal and put it inside. What will happen to that matter? You will get what? Where is the heat coming from? It gets to the matter. If this thing is a ball of iron, red hot, it's very hot, you bring it closer to another object. What happened to that object? It will become what is here transfers into this. Hmm? Whether it is cold substance, you bring something closer to it, that thing will become cold. If it is hot substance, substance you bring something that is hot close to it, it becomes hot. True or false? the life, the glory that is in him, as you come close, as you behold him with an open face, as in a mirror, the glory enters you. The wisdom enters you. The virtues enters you because you're close to him. Those virtues stays inside of you. They are the ones that repel anything that is not of God that comes your way. It repels it. It can't penetrate. It can't do anything. That is why if you drink anything that is poisonous or known to you, it enters your system. These virtues that you have sucked up through fellowship neutralizes it. But when you are not in fellowship, those virtues are not going to. Because that is why he said, we have this treasure in an earthen vessel so that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. Why is it in an earthen vessel? Because this vessel leaks. The vessel leaks. 
So, when you suck that grace, that glory, that virtue, because it, it, it cannot it can't contain. Just like uh, you boil a hot of water, put it in the bucket, the thing is boiling and all. You leave it after some time. Even when, even though it's a flask, you put hot water inside the flask and all of that. You know, it can last for one day. It can last for two days. After like three, four, five days, what happened? It becomes cold. The heat has gone out. That's how it is. That is why we have this vessel. That's why it is empty vessel. So it needs to be constantly refilled. So as you draw closer to him, that virtue that is in him rubs off on you. You carry that virtue. That's why you need to every day, every day you go for a refill. That's what you do when you go into fellowship with him. That virtue rubs on you. If anything that is deadly touches you, it can't harm you. That is why that virus can't touch you. Because the life that you have is not an independent life. Eternal life that is in Christ. It's not an independent. You depend. That is why you say he is a vine and you are the branch. Any branch that is not connected to the vine dies. But as long as you are connected to the vine, you keep maintaining fellowship. That thing keeps rubbing on you. The glory of God fills your being. When somebody sees you, brightens. When they do any projection, the thing comes, it can't go. If, if ritual killers arrest you and they want to use you for ritual cleaning, ritual sacrifice and all of that, they say this one, they can't touch it. True or false? But there is another person that is born again. They use that person and kill the person and use him for rituals. True or false? So what is, what is the difference? So you see the reason why they say maintain being filled. Do not be drunk with wine wearing it, but being filled with the Spirit of God. That's why that viper touched him. He don't bother that. That's why you can pick up serpent. That's why you can drink deadly thing. It won't hurt you. That's why you can eat something that poisonous. You can't touch. That's what? That's the walk. I want all the things that I'm talking about is a walk. Walking out your salvation. When I talk about your sonship, all the things that I said is walking it out. When I talk about authority, about power, and all of that, he's staying under that. That is the works. If you don't do that, although you are born again, this ritual killer, this 419er, have you entered a bus and all of that? They did juju and all of that, and the thing, the next thing you fall asleep. And they collected your ATM card. And you ask you about the PIN number. You willingly give the, the, your PIN number. When you finish, they push you out of the car. It now done on you. Has it happened? Has it happened to somebody? Or do you know that somebody it has happened to? Is that person a Christian? So why did it happen to a Christian? Because your life is empty. It's dry. It's, it has leaked. The glory has leaked. And one of the things that leaked the glory so fast, sin, malice, anger, quarrel, bitterness, rancor, you don't have it. Your life is empty. Nothing inside. Murmuring, gossiping. Your life is open, vulnerable. That is why you fall sick easily. 
When I tell you that I have not fallen sick, and does it mean that sickness it does not come? It comes. Sometimes malaria can come. Recently it was malaria. It was just trying to find its way in me and all of that. I was just feeling funny and all of that. It was ne- so. What I began to notice is that in the morning like this, when I got up in the morning, my mouth would be bitter. I said, "What is he?" But I was fine. It was malaria? He tries to get at me. He wasn't. We mosquito. So I now looked, I said, where did the mosquito enter this world? I had to go and get a flea and flee the whole room and everywhere and all of that. As long as you are vulnerable, you are open, you are empty. You don't have divine immunity inside of you. That immunity comes through fellowship as you come into proximity with Jesus, as you come closer. All those blessings that God has blessed you with in the heavenly places, which is in Christ, as you fellowship with him, hmm? all those things, they rub off on you. They enter you. The wisdom of God enters. The grace of God enters. The glory of God, it shines. Everything. But when you don't maintain fellowship, when you don't keep fellowship and all of that, you are empty. That's why when you want to pray, when there is a situation or circumstances and all of that, to address it, you become afraid. You don't have confidence. Because the confidence that is in him enters you. The boldness that is in him enters you. Because everything, just like that heat, everything that is the content of that, it comes out, all of them enters you. There are seven ways you maintain fellowship. Seven ways. And you must be very deliberate about it. You must not be casual with it. Number one, worship. The deep, call it the deep. The most aspect is worship is so. Worship you know, you worship in the Holy of Holies. When you worship the virtues, it's beyond singing. When you worship his life and his virtue, everything enters you. The glory of God fills your heart. Even in the Old Testament, there's a Bible says when they worship, the glory fills their heart so much that even the priest could not stand to minister. Then in the New Testament, that glory is inside. We have that glory. We have that treasure inside. As you worship, as you worship, that in a bra- one day, one day I was praying. I was praying. I saw, I saw my inside. I saw my inside. I don't know how to is. is it was white like this. I couldn't, I was, it's inside me. I was praying. I saw it. I couldn't look at it. It was the glory of God. It radiates when you worship. That is why when we talk about worship, hello, hello. You see this thing that I'm telling you? This is what you need to reign in life. This is what you need to put that Antichrist and their mad people and all of that to obey. Is God in you showing up? The confidence, the boldness when you meet obstacle and all of that, the boldness comes from within. You have sucked his presence inside of you. God is strong. He makes you strong. God is bold. He makes you bold. God is glorious. He makes you glorious. God is wise. He makes you wisdom. Everything that is in you, you will suck it in fellowship and through worship. So that is why worship is beyond uh, singing songs. You open up your heart. How does demon enter people? How does people contact demons? 
the same way by playing music, by singing certain songs, and then the thing come upon you. When you go to all these uh, spirits people that are inside the mountain and praying, and all these in, these people that do like this. They will burn incense and do whatever and they will start. And there are certain song and certain incantations and all of that provoking them. The thing is inside. And then the thing starts reacting inside of them. That is in the negative. In the positive is when you offer incense as you begin to worship him. His glory, his presence fills your heart. When you finish, try it. Because I told you, all the things that we are teaching you is meant for you to put into prayer. That is works now. Have you seen the works? That is why you need to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Because if you don't do it, you become a victim of circumstance. It's no, there's no two... See, I, I was like you. I've been like you. This the same way you sat down like this. I, somebody was talking and teaching. I was open. I opened my eyes like this, because I don't move. I don't shift. I will suck everything. Another way is that when you sit under someone, or ministry that has this grace going. That same thing enters you. But you see, there are laws again. Because as long as you have bad belly towards, it won't happen. Never. Never. If somebody carries that whatever, you can be hugging the person, no? but if you have Babele, because what you respect is what you do what? Attract. If you don't respect that person, if you don't revere that person, that thing will not go. Even though he plays and raises lays and on, it won't work. These are spiritual laws. That is one of the reasons why you hear that it is not by might, it is not by power. By strength shall no man prevail. It is not of him that willeth, nor him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. That's how this thing can come. Worship. Sitting under a vessel, clean vessel. Because See, if you sit under a ministry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be shy to you because I will say it the way it is. If you sit under a ministry, maybe the man is a divorcee. He has married another person. He's standing here. You see that altar? It's polluted. It's polluted. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you want to think. That's your business. If you challenge it, I'll open the Bible and show you. Out of the abundance, the heart. Sin is in the heart. And that heart is defiled. So everything that is coming out of it is defiled. And you are going to produce after your kind. So that is why someone say every man and woman deserve the church or the ministry where you go. Because it depends on what you are looking, what your heart is looking for. If you are yearning for truth, the Lord is your shepherd, he will not lack. He will make you lie behind. And he will lead you. Is what? Because that is the longing of your heart. When you come to, maybe you are looking for prosperity, you, you know, you want somebody to prophesy unto you, these people that see vision and they can, and then you come here. Are you going to stay? 
Are you going to stay? You will run. You won't stay. You go to some. What are you looking for? Where they see visions, where they prophesy, where they preach about prosperity. And once you find it and whatever, wow, you will settle down. That's what you are going to be getting. So it is the longing of your heart. But if you are looking for where, because a lot of people here, some of you, I know you. You see, all the things you say, I hear them. They say every time, every time righteousness, every time holiness and right. Is that what we're going to be uh, every time holy? Don't you have another message to be? My brethren, they are the ones saying it. I won't call your name, but I know who you are. And uh, I am your friend. You don't have to be my friend, but I am your friend. The more you do that, the more happy I am, I realize. I don't have a, as you see me so, I don't get problem. I don't get an enemy. Lie, lie. Even when I hear what you say, even when I know that this is what you say, my heart is open. My, I love you. There is no hatred inside. I can't. The thing is, because I have a close walk with him. I stay with him. So the virtues, God can't hate somebody. God can't lie some, to somebody. His virtues enters me. And I'm fine. When I hear you criticize me or say whatever, I go on my knees, I mention your name, I say, Father, bless Lukeman for me. Help him. Guide him. Direct him. Increase him. Help him to establish and to know you more. That's what I pray and bless him. Move on. So, but when you sit in the presence of somebody you respect, that grace flows freely. It flows. It's, that is why he said, follow them who are those who through faith learn of their example. Follow them. The virtues enter. How many have I given you? I talk about worship. I talk about sitting under a ministry that has a very life of God for you. That's why he said, take heed what you hear. Some of you open up yourself to all this. You see, this thing that you see on the YouTube, be careful what you listen to. You open your heart, the good, the bad, and the ugly enters. The second one, I mean the third one, thanksgiving. These are spiritual sacrifices. That's why he said, you see, God is, God, my God, my God, my God. That is why obedience is better than sacrifice. Just obey God. Do the things that God is saying you should do. Your life blossoms. You see, the, the very essence of God, that thing that is in God, as you obey him, one of the things he said, God is seeking for those who will worship him in truth and in spirit. Because God is a spirit. So he seeketh for those who will worship him in truth and in what? In spirit. And Philippians 3, 3 says we are of the circumcision that worship God in his spirit. And we do not have confidence in the flesh. That's what he said. So when you obey that and begin to worship God, the virtues of God enters you. He grows you and matures you. He offers immunity, offers the growth, everything.
both the wisdom of God and all of that, they rub off on you. That is why you say evil communication does what? Well. So how can he corrupt somebody? How can that person be corrupted? It's by association. So good communication also builds good manners. The third one is thanksgiving. It's one of the spiritual sacrifices the Bible said. He said it in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Peter 2, 5. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to do what? To offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. One of those spiritual sacrifices that is you offer to God is worship. And that worship must be what? Acceptable to God. Because there are worship that are not acceptable. When your heart is defiled, you offer strange incense. It will not be acceptable. If it were in the Old Testament, death. The things that God has given to us, there are many. God has, you see, God has given us himself. He said to Abraham, I am your exceeding great reward. I give you myself. What else will God give you? In the New Testament, he has given us himself. He has given us his spirit. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost, that the spirit of God lives in you? He has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. There's nothing more God can do for you. He has done everything. Everything is inside. Walk it out. Walk in the knowledge of it. Offer spiritual sacrifices unto him. And the virtues, that virtues are released from within you. Thanksgiving. That is why he said, in everything, do what? Give thanks. In everything, give thanks. And God will be much more willing to open up. And then grace, grace abounds in your life. These are the works. But if you are stingy with worship, stingy with thanksgiving, Psalm 100. Talking about thanksgiving, praises, worship. If I stay there now, I won't go any other place. I won't do any other thing today. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with what? Singing. What type of singing? Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Don't feel bad that I'm talking about because it's not easy at all. What I am telling you is what took me about 20 years in the process to learn. That's why I have patience with you. I'm here to see a church. I'm not bragging. I'm not doing Enter a church. You see where they understand what praise is. Sometimes they will sing worship in the name of praise. They will sing praise in the name of worship. They will sing thanksgiving in the name of worship. Thanksgiving is you are thanking God. You are expressing your gratitude to him for what he did for you. Praises is you are praising God for his power, for his awesomeness, for his greatness. 
you are worshipping God for who he is. His nature, his holiness. Praises is about his power. Like that song you are singing, your power, your king, that in his praises. Oh. But he thinks he's worship. And that's what the Bible says, God is fearful in the midst of the praises of it. If you want God, eh, if you want God to destroy, that is, eh, if you want God to rise in his majesty and destroy, do the unthinkable, you know, that is what they did. When they finished praying, the building shook. They provoked God to holy anger. Why should they, why do they hidden? And the people imagine venting. And the kings of the earth gather themselves against the elect. Thy only child, Jesus. The Bible says, when they have made an end to that prayer, the building shook. You move God. There are things you say about God, though. It will rise. The building shook. It's because they knew. They learned it. They knew when Jesus taught them. For that three and a half years he was, he taught them. Enter into his gates with what? And into his court with what? Be thankful unto him and bless his thanksgiving. It's not by singing we thank with a grateful heart give thank. That's not the thanksgiving that he's talking about. And you can sing it slowly. You look as if it is worship. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks We give thanks because he's living. Jesus Christ, the Son. He said, give thanks. You, are, you haven't given thanks, so. Have you given thanks? He said, because when you sit down and think through what you sing, what you say, you have not given thanks. You are saying to give thanks. You may not even have to sing it in so you can you can offer thanksgiving with your words. You can offer thanksgiving in songs, in a song way, in an ordinary word. You can offer it. You can step up here and say, Let's lift our hand and begin to bless God for who He is. If not because of Him, so so and so would because of him he died on the cross and paid it. Why would the Bible say we should give thanks? If you read Colossians 1 in verse 12, it says giving thanks unto him who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You see why you are giving thanks? That we are part, uh, he said we are the people of his pasture. We are his inheritance. What manner of love is this that God has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God? His thanksgiving, his appreciation. So if you don't know how to sing a song like that, you can say it in words. And when you say it, God's heart open. His rain come upon you. His hand come upon you. That's part of wash, I mean fellowship. That's another way you fellowship with God. The first one is what? Worship. The second one? The third one? Thanksgiving. Then another one is praises. Give me Hebrew 13, 4, Hebrew 13, 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. Have you seen it? The fifth one. It's through the studying of the word of God. The Bible said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The life as you study it. The word of God is quick, is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword. 
a piercing. When you study it, when you open yourself to it, such things enter you. Revelation. It, it will be hitting you like hammer. There are virtues of God. I, let, how can I explain it in a very simple way that even the most simplest person can understand? How many of you know boiling, boiling eye or boiling ring, heater? They use it to. When that boiling ring, okay, inside heat, inside that boiling ring, there is an element inside that can absorb heat. Is inside that boiling ring. There is an element. When you break that in and open it, you will see those things inside. So what happens is that when on its own, it is cold. If you touch that boiling ring, it is cold. Okay? But when you plug it to the source, power source, power enters it. And then that element that is there picks up. But if that element is not there, if you plug that in, it's not going to work. If you touch it, it might even shock you and kill you. But because of that element, it absorbs that heat, that heat and then it becomes very hot. That is how it is. The, there is a glory inside of you. There is a treasure inside of you. But it needs a source from God, which is through worship, which is through praises, which is through sitting under a man of God that is clean and pure, which is through thanksgiving. As you offer it, that thing inside glows. That's why I told you the other the one day I was praying, I saw what I saw my inside. It was very bright. Every one of us will have it. It's the glory of God. That same glory that was in Jesus Christ when he was praying, the Bible says his countenance changed. Everything radiated. He, 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 he shone like the bright, brighter than the sun in his full strength. It's inside you. There is no difference between you and Jesus Christ. I said no difference. He said, as he is, so are we here on earth. Inside out. It is the same Holy Ghost, the same Ghost. Everything is inside us. He is the one living inside. He is not part of some part of Jesus Christ is living inside. He is all of him is inside us. Of his fullness have we all done what? Receive. Of his fullness. You don't, we don't know who, we don't know what we carry inside. We don't know that we are the treasure. That is, we are carrying the treasure, the glory of God. But this treasure and this glory, we mess with it. We live anyhow. And as you live anyhow and all of that, you will not see the impact of that glory show up. The extent to which you live for him is the extent to which that glory will manifest. So uh, this one is now in the studying of the word of God. And it's not just in the study of the word of God. When you study the word of God, you obey. When you study it, you obey it. When you study it, you obey it. Let me tell you something. When you open your mouth, when you study the word of God, and you live in obedience to that word, when you open your mouth to speak, if you open your mouth, I'm not meaning, I'm not talking about speaking the word of God. I say when you open your mouth and talk to somebody, you are discussing with somebody and all of that. If you see the virtue, the life that enters, it disciplines that person. I don't know how to explain it. It 
You know, I was telling you about the works. Faith alone is what? But if you add work, it's complete. And what is a work? The work are those things you need to do. As a result of what you have inside of you, you begin to. How many have I given you? Another one. Praying in the Spirit. <laughs> Some of you say you don't believe in praying in the praying in tongues. <laughs> I don't even have a, I don't even have, you know when we discuss, when we talk about this, whether praying in tongues or not praying, you know when we talk about, it's about 30 years ago, we've left, about 50 years ago, there we've left that move wrong. Somebody is still in the Old Testament. There are many, there are many people, there is one, one, uh, he was in church, he came, I asked him, are you born again? He said, yeah. do you speak in tongues? He said, no. Why? He was just looking at me. According to the scriptures, the Bible, there are two times you come in contact with the Holy Spirit. The first one is at new birth. When you get born again, the Spirit of God comes. He stays within. Hmm? It is the one that you need for your salvation. When Jesus Christ met them, after his death, they went into the room and locked themselves. When Jesus showed up, he talked with them. After that, he said, the Bible said he breathed into them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. That was when they got born again. And then he told them, go to such and so place and wait for me. 50 days later, I will show up. And they went and tarried. And then on that day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came. They were all baptized in the Holy Ghost. And the evidence that they are baptized in the Holy Ghost is, a lot of people say it is fruit of the Spirit. Stop now. The thing is clear in the Bible. And the Bible said they began to speak in an another tongue, in an unknown tongues. But what happened in the Acts of Apostles, Acts of Apostles chapter 2? There are three times the Bible talks about speaking in tongues. There are three expressions of the speaking in tongues. The first one was in the Acts of Apostles chapter 2. When the Holy Ghost came, the Bible said they began to speak in another tongue. And they found that they are speaking people's languages. They know the language. So some, for example, some are speaking Hausa, some are speaking Yoruba, some are speaking Igbo, some are speaking different languages and all of that. So the people, they heard them. They knew that they were speaking their own language. That's one. And after that, that was the only expression of that kind of expression of baptism in the Holy Ghost. If you read Acts of Apostles chapter 19, when Paul prayed for them, the Bible says, and they got, the Paul laid hands on them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they magnified God. It's written. And this one is uh, in, in, in 19. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they did what? They speak what? In tongue. And that was the time that happened to John. That's John when he got born, filled with the Holy Ghost. He prophesied and prophesied and prophesied. That's evidence. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon how many flesh? And you shall do what? Prophesy. That is evidence. The one that he showed in verse, in Acts of Apostles chapter 10, and he said, and they, 
And many came with Peter because that on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with what? Speak with what? And did what? Magnify God. They praised God. Why? Is evidence of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. These signs shall follow them that believe. Did you believe? And what are one of the signs shall, that shall follow you? You shall speak with what? So why do you say that you don't believe in speaking in tongues? It is written in the Acts of Apostles. Jesus Christ talked about it. On that very day, Jesus cried with a loud voice, If anyone tells, let him come and drink. Out of his shall flow rivers of a living world. And the Bible says he was talking about the Holy Ghost, which is not yet given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. He hasn't gone because he said, When I get to the Father, I will send another comforter. I don't just, in case of just to clear, because you can't just sit down and be, because your life is dry, empty. You don't have, that's why you can't, they're, they're, you can't serve God. You can't. He said, in, uh, in Luke chapter 24, 29, he said, don't do anything. He said, carry ye, stay in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from where? From on high. So you can serve. Acts of Apostles chapter 1 verse 9, the Bible said, and he said, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And then you shall now go and bear witness. Because after the death of Jesus Christ, and they were all afraid. They couldn't preach. They couldn't do anything. The power to do it is not given to them. So they needed baptism in the Holy Ghost. And then they were now baptized. And then all of a sudden, boldness came. And they now went out and began to preach. And that's why you see the great miracles and signs and wonders and all of that. And somebody wake up and say, you don't believe in speaking in tongues. Because there is no fruit in your life. No fruit to show. Don't worry. The day will come we're going to get before Jesus Christ. We're gonna, it's not about talking. When you finish talking, the day of reckoning is coming. We are going to all stand before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. You are going to give an account. You will hear my voice that day. Where is Zeno? You know, it was Zeno today or whatever. He said on Monday when he finished and he said he couldn't sleep in the night. He wanted to sleep. He is my voice. He has been hearing. That's how you'll be hearing my voice you that day. You will see me in your dream. You will see what I'm saying and all of that. You'll be seeing it. You know, you know how this thing happened? Because you will never have an excuse. You say you did not, but you saw your brethren. You live with your brethren. You hear them, you see them speak in tongues and all of that, and you say you don't believe. So what they are doing is fake. Is that what you are saying? Or maybe you believe that some are giving the gifts of the, Because they go and quote First, First Corinthians chapter 12. That's why I say I don't want to go, because it's going to take the whole of my time. They go and quote... First Corinthians chapter 12, uh, 30, whatever. He said, do all speak in tongues. Do all perform miracles. Do all do this. He's talking about the office. Because if you go there and read it, you see what he, you start the argument, you see what he was talking about. Do all prophesy. He's talking about, he's talking about the prophecy as an office. A prophet as an office. Are we all prophets? The answer is no. But do we prophesy? Yes. That you are prophesying does not make you a prophet. Because a prophet is an office. And there are gifts that are evident in the life of a prophet. There are three major outstanding gifts in the operation in the life of every prophet. And it's always there like water anytime. The gift of wisdom, the word of knowledge and discerning of spirit. You can't sit on that. You can't sit in this church and be you wake up. You, anything that you want to say, come and show us from the Bible. If you can't prove it in the Bible, shut up. Your wife is saying that she doesn't believe in speaking in tongues. Your wife got filled with the Holy Ghost eh? at home. Not that anybody laid hands on her. 
she was in her house. The power of God came, came upon her. She began to speak in tongues, prophesied. He turned around and said, don't believe in speaking in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue does what? But he that prophesied edified the church. Jude chapter 1, verse 20 says, Building up your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. When you pray, give me Romans chapter 6, it's Romans chapter 8, 26. Let me tie this three up. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to, as we ought. But the Spirit is said, maketh intercession for us with what? Groaning, which cannot be uttered. Yes? He that searcheth the heart of the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. But he that maketh intercession, because he maketh intercession according to the will of God. So he is. The Holy Ghost is now praying through you. He comes alive. And as you pray in the Spirit, wisdom, revelations, visions will begin to become the, because the language of the Holy Ghost is the language of visions and dreams. So that is what happens when you, that is one way you fellowship with the, so when we talk about fellowshipping with the Holy Ghost, that is means in fellowship, because you are joined heirs with Christ, you share with him. What you are sharing is with both his holiness, you are sharing his holiness, you are sharing his righteousness, you are sharing everything with him, everything that is of God. You find the rich deposit of it and the expression of it in your life. How many have I given to you? Fellowshipping with the brethren. Fellowshipping with the brethren. It is in Psalm 84, 7 that said, they, they grow from strength to strength. They that are pure in... Zion. How do you grow from strength to strength as you appear in Zion? The strength of God, the spirit of might. Your inner strength is energized. Your inner man is energized by the power of the spirit of God as you fellowship with the brethren. 1 John chapter 1 verse 3 That which we have seen and here declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with who? The Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So fellowship in this regard. Our fellowship, our fellowship together. Corporate fellowship. You know... You know why we grow from strength to strength? Each and every one of us here are carrying what? The glory of God. Hmm? As you pray and is worship, that glory has expression. It comes, glows. This one comes. Can you imagine each and every one of us here has a car? Everyone here has a car. And then you park it. Everyone is facing, is in a secular position, position is in a secular form, and then you beam your light. Can you imagine how, how what do you think will be the, the, brightness of, the brightness of the light when the whole people here that has car put on your headlamp and every one of them is shining? What kind of electricity will be more powerful than that? 
But when only two, three people put on their... So when those lights come on and you are inside it, the glory that you carry is greater than that of your individual glory. It will help you get a job done faster. That's why you say one will chase a thousand and two will chase how many? Ten thousand. Because of corporate grace, corporate anointing. The days are gone. In those days, that's how we grew up. Prayer meeting is the most attended meeting in those days. But today, when is your prayer meeting on Friday? Is where two or three are gathered. Is it not? See, in Oak House, in Yaba, it's the same thing. You can count the one, two, three, four, five. They don't come. You see, when you begin to, you see, when you understand, there are things you understand. You start, you start your attitude and your mannerism and all of that towards God and towards the church and all will change. The reason why we drag our feet, we do the things the way we do is because we lack no, we are still like children. We have not learned. How many have I given you? You don't go like this one, no. Giving. <laughs> you see, they don't they love. I say you no go like her. First Corinthians chapter eight. Second, please, I beg your pardon. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of where? Macedonia. Grace of God bestowed on them. Grace on them virtues. How that in the, in the great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own self to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Insomuch that we desired Titus, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. Therefore, as you have abandoned, abound in, every, in everything, in faith and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others, and prove, and to prove the sincerity of your love. For you know that the you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty you might become rich as you give. That grace comes upon you. That is another way to manifest the grace of riches in your life. If you don't give, though you are rich, you will not experience it in your life. you will not experience it. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that through his poverty you might become rich. Verse 10. And herein I give my advice for this expedition for you who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of what that which you have. For if there first, if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man had, and not according to that he had not. For I mean not that other men be eased and you be burdened. But by an equality that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want and their abundance 
also may be a supply for your want, that there may be a quality. As it is written, he that had gathered much had nothing over, and he that had gathered little had no lack. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into their hearts, into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed, he accepted the exhortation, but being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother, whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not only, and not that, that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. So when you give, when you give, you unlock that deposit that is inside of you. That is why he said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together. So when, the, when you give, what is going to come back in return is that it's going to be in that container. They will shake it so it will create more space and they will add more and press it down so that it will be full. It's through giving. But if you don't want to give, you say in the lack, you'll be lacking. Some don't know how to give a sacrificial gift. When I talk now, you think that I'm targeting yours, your, your money. I'm not interested in your money. I'm not. But if you give me, I will take, and I will bless you, and I will pray for you. You give me or you don't give me, it doesn't change the way I look at you, the way I relate with you. It doesn't make any difference. But you are the one that will determine the outcome of your life. The only thing is that, don't be coming to me and say, Pastor, I want to see you. I have, uh, my pocket is wet. If it is worth, go and remove it. Don't come and tell me. You change it and wear another one. Amen. Amen. There is one more I would have loved to tell you. Should I tell you? The Bible said that we, God has made unto us kings and priests. Give me Romans chapter 5 verse 17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. What do kings do? What do kings do? They reign. Is it not? Are you a king? Are you a king? So you reign. What will make you not to reign? Because you see, everything, every of this thing has its own workout. Like your sonship. What is required in your kingship is not what is required in your sonship. What is required in your sonship? Maturity. You mature. And stop behaving like children. Stop thinking like children. Stop, stop acting like children. Stop doing things and saying things like children. Stop organizing and handling things as children. Stop it. Anything you want to do, you do it excellently well. Put excellence into it. When it comes to kingship, You have to live by righteousness. If you don't do that, you can't see it. Kings reign, and they reign in righteousness. Hello, what establishes a kingdom? 
what establishes a business, what establishes an organization, what establishes a family is righteousness. Anything that is not built on righteousness will not serve. Somebody was asking a question in the morning. How is it that these people that started this in the build and they think now to leave them and then they grow? Righteousness. Is that that I, if I open it that day, we wouldn't have gone that morning. Go and check, go and read it. You know, when you go to these foreign countries in the, the West, Europe and America and the rest of them. You know their laws. You can't break their laws and get away. It's not that the corruption is not there. There is corruption. But if the law catches you, there is no mercy. They don't hear. My wife told me, say, the day, one of those days when she traveled to America and um, they stopped her at immigration. They ransacked everything, searched and searched and searched and searched. At the point, she was like, she called me, she sent me a text. She called me when they were doing all that. So when they noticed that she was calling me, they intercepted and stopped her, whatever. He said to them, they said to her, he said, you see, you see there is nothing like mercy. The law is the law. If you, are caught, if you are caught, you go for it, no matter who you are. If you are a president and you commit a crime that you are not supposed to commit, when you finish as your president and all of that, they will arrest you. Do they do it in Nigeria? Some of the past presidents of Nigeria are supposed to be in, in jail today, if not all of them. Many of them are supposed to be in jail. If you don't believe in righteousness, you won't last. That your family, you think you are whatever, it won't last. You see, when, when you don't call a spade a spade, it doesn't matter when it affects you, whether it's you. Ask my wife, go and ask her. That's why we, uh, we are the way we are today. I put my foot on ground. I don't care who the person is. If You see, the house help in my house. You can't treat her like a slave. Everything that my children has access to, they have access to it. If my wife does something that is wrong, I will tell her right in your face, this thing you did is wrong. You must stop it. Ask her. I don't give a damn. Because if you don't do that, it thinks to live a right job. Because when it is on your own, you've been saying all this, when it is on your own domot now, you, you start being politically correct, correct. So we have learned it over time. That is why you see her talk the way she talks. If you come to her house, you open the first door, you see the values we have in the house, one of it is righteousness. Call a spade a spade. What is bad is bad. What is good is good. Without any sentiment around it. If we quarrel, we will quarrel. After the quarrel, we will line up again. Don't be like Adam. He was there. God was the one that told him, don't eat any of this fruit except. You can eat any, but this one, don't eat it. They, when the wife came, she, he told him. Because when God was telling Abraham, Adam, the wife was not there. The wife was not nowhere to be found. He was still not created. He was still not formed. So it was after God had given him every direction and instruction and commandment, he now pulled the woman out. So how did the woman know when Satan was asking her, did God say you should not? And she answered, he said, God said we should not eat any of this. That if we eat it, this one will happen. How did she know? Her husband told her. 
So when Satan was there talking with her, she, he was there. He was there. Because the Bible says she ate and gave his wife that was with her. So he was there when Satan was talking to Get quiet. If you are the type that see bad, you keep quiet because it is now you. But if it is another person, that your family, that your marriage no go last. It won't stay. You think you are doing some. See, anything that is not be, the foundation of that thing must be established. Give me Hebrew chapter 1, verse 9. Thou hast loved what? Righteousness and did what? And hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Give me verse 8. But unto the Son he said he, Thy throne, O God, is forever. And the scepter of what? Is what? Is the scepter of your kingdom. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Manela feri maneka proto. Zive I am telling you, listen. If you build anything on the foundation of righteousness, let me, let me tell you something. Let the rain come. Let the wind come. Let the government rise. When they finish, there is nothing they can do about it. They can't uproot it. Nobody can uproot it. Things that are built on righteousness. The reason why the kingdom of God is standing today is because it's founded on righteousness. Establish that your business based on righteousness. No, will every other company are failing and all of that, that we stand. Righteousness exalt a nation. Armor, the Bible calls it the armor of righteousness is power on his own. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have built your kingdom on righteousness. You have founded your marriage on righteousness. You have founded a church on righteousness. You have that is you see Oak House Church. You see Oak House Church. Somebody met me in the morning. He said he had a word from God for me. And the things he said, I didn't know the guy from Adam. So when he, he said I, I called a couple of you, I said, come and listen, so that you hear. I'm not the one. I didn't make it up. He said those who got, he said in the church, Oak House Church, he said they are, he saw, he said as he was sitting there, God opened his eyes. He was, he was seeing people in their pockets sitting there and they are gossiping and talking about against the church, against the pastors. He said, God is saying to them to go and warn. He said, because they are going to die. What, haven't I said this before? Those of haven't I said it before? He said, they will die. What you say, it is not a question of sentiment. A, an institution that is built on right, there is nothing. You see, with all your gossip, with all the way you feel and all you feel in, you don't feel out. It doesn't bother anybody. It doesn't bother me. That's why I'm not bothered. That's why I'm not perturbed. That's why I never had one second of sleepless night. You think about I don't even remember them. There is one thing that I concentrated and made sure God helped us. When we are founding Oak House Story, everything from the foundation to the whatever, spotless. And you want to come and attack it, your head will go. 
I won't fight you. Me, I heard all those things. I, I, there is nothing that I didn't hear. I heard all of them. I said, me. The last thing you will see me, you come out. I, I, don't, I don't pass that stage. I don't pass that. I'm a dead man. I've told you where I come from. I've gone to hell. I come back. I've gone to hell. Suffering. God handled me. Dealt with me. Prepared me ahead of And then somebody wake up and... You can go to other churches and say all those things. And you get your way. But not here. That's why you see me. That's why some of you, when I say, uh, you feel whatever. Uh, Pastor, you see me? I'm not like that. I will tell you the way it is. Look at Jesus Christ. Thy throne, O God, is for ever and why? Because the scepter of righteousness is a scepter of your kingdom. Having received a kingdom that cannot be moved, that's why if, if you commit your life and your destiny and your future in this kingdom, you will never regret it one bit. It will start by saying the truth to yourself first. If you don't tell yourself the truth, you know, I read for you, is it not as um, Psalm 51 verse speaking the truth from your heart? If you are not the type that tells yourself the truth, this thing is not right. This thing is wrong. You won't go far. You won't go far. Whether you like my face, you don't like my face. I'm not telling you my opinion. I'm reading for you what is God, what God said. He said, your throne, O oh God, is forever. The reason is because your righteousness is this, the scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. He said, because you love righteousness, you must love righteousness. So you must hate what? Iniquity. You must love it. You must love what God loves. You must hate what he hates. When you see something that is wrong, say it is wrong. It doesn't matter who is involved. It doesn't matter whether it's my wife. It doesn't matter whether it's my husband. It doesn't matter whether it's my daughter. I don't do like that. Somebody, I, I, I think somebody come, he said he was talking to my daughter. And then my daughter ignored him. He said he didn't know whether it's because of X, Y, Z. I carried the phone. I called my daughter. I said, so so and so person says so so and so thing. Is that true? He said, no, and all of that. I said, okay, no problem. When I got home, I called her. I said, come. Is it true that so so and so thing? She explained everything and all of that. So I knew she was not into it because my children are not like that. Because if he wants to develop that, I will fall, ask them. And that's why I say, all the, both uh, Moses, you have uh, Samuel is in your. I say, don't treat Samuel because he's my son. Don't try that rubbish with me. Anything that you are doing to Edith, do it to him. If there is any misbehavior, you punish, punish him. I give you 100% backing. I don't behave like that. I'm not a sentiment person, no. I am not. That's why if you fight me, if you fight me, what is going to come after you? You won't, you won't understand it. God knows my heart. 
I've lost, I've lost so many friends. I've lost so many things. I've lost a lot. You can't decide to go this way, this route, and you have many friends. It's a lie. You will be a lone ranger. You will be alone. It is a narrow path. I'm talking about narrow path. You think it is easy to speak the truth? You think it's easy to stand here and be telling you all this? Because I tell you, some of you are get angry and all of that. You wake up and you get up and you go home. You won't come back again. And so because I am interested to see crowd so that I will be a big man of God. And then you are going to be bringing tithes and offering to me and all of that so that I will lose. And so I will tell you what you want to hear. I will not tell you that you are living in adultery because the woman that you are living with is not your wife. Because I will not tell you, you you don't want me to tell you that this is fornication, that all fornicators are going to go to hell if you don't repent. The only salvation is that you repent. If you don't turn away from this, this is what will happen. I don't care. You are my daughter, and so you misbehave. I told them, I said, you know me. You people, I told them, I called all of them. Daniela lived somewhere there. I saw them there. I said, you people have known me. I'm your father. I've come a long way with your mom. See how we have lived our lives. What we are enjoying today is a sacrifice that we have made. And if you think that you are going to sit on it eh, and then relax, and be wearing clothes and be painting your whatever and all of that, I will slap that demon out of your eyes. Everybody's lying up. They used to be like that. But they are no more. Righteousness is not easy. Today, you see, my, you see my wife wear butter, bread and butter, sugar and... Is it sugar? No, it's not sugar. It's oil. Oil and pepper. No, it's not oil and pepper. It's oil and salt. You put salt inside oil, you will see the salt again. All of them, they will mix. We are one. Permit me to talk to you about marriage tomorrow, about relationship tomorrow. That's if we have the time, is I doubt. Because we have a guest speaker tomorrow. But even if we don't have the time, some other time. That's why I am happily, I am happily married. But we've come a long way. But what has helped us is because we put our feet on ground. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. In those days, my whatever, we quarrel, put my feet on the ground. And then everything finally straightens up. But if you are the type you want to feel whatever and all of that, who cares? Don't worry, there is an unseen hand that is coming after you. I won't be there. I say what I owe every of those that hear me anywhere I go, what I owe you. You see this truth? I will present it to you. I won't miss word. I won't do I don't know how to do like this. If you like, you like it. If there are those of them God has sent to me, to us, they will come, they will stay. I'm not interested in crowd. But if the crowd will come, of what benefit is it? I have a crowd of 10,000 people and only 50 people are going to heaven. Why will I waste my time with that? I prefer to have like 70 or 80 or 100. Out of that 100, I have about 20 or 30. That will, it is better for me than to have a large crowd. 
It's not in whatever. It's at the end of the day. How many of them are going to heaven? So we start business today. The business fails. See, the Bible says, if you are not faithful in that which is another man, what will happen to your own? What will happen to your own? You won't have it. So if you are misbehaving with somebody's business, with somebody's job, with somebody's whatever, you are lying and cheating and doing whatever, don't worry, you're not going to stay there for life. One day you come out. You want to start your own. You want to be on your own. Uh -huh. You go and collect prayer. You're wasting your time. You are a time waster. No matter who pray for you. And you know one of, the, one of those things that the guy said when he was sharing that whatever. He said, when the problem starts, he said, no matter the person, nobody on planet Earth will pray for you and you get away from that problem. You don't touch God's anointed. You don't touch God's oracle. You don't, there are, you see, no matter how mad you are as a armed robber, eh? you carry your team, you want to go and rob, then you enter army barracks. We are, <laughs> we are every, everywhere, everywhere is landmines. Every, and they know where the landmines are. Everywhere is landmines, field everywhere. You go there to go and steal. You won't just come out as a dead man. That is a... They won't even find... It. When they kill, they will butcher you. Eh? Butcher, because everyone will take a part of your whole body. There are places you go to make war, to make trouble and all of that. I know you, you know, because people have seen churches. They think churches, they think you are one of those churches. We are not. I'm not bragging about it. I'm not trying to make you look well. I'm not even putting a, what is fair? Am I, I'm not interested. But I am telling you, there are churches and there are churches. You see this one, Oak House Church here. That's where all these testimonies and all of that that you are here. I didn't. From the beginning of the building of this thing to the end, I didn't know nothing was going on. I just came here and saw everything. And they are demolishing and doing whatever, and they spared this. Come to Yaba, come to see what every single thing, in a space of how many years, everything you see. Love righteousness. So. It's not just that you are living. Love it. Love it. Love it. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus loved righteousness. He hated iniquity. You don't go, my, my wife's, what do you call the person? Her mother has a sister. Then that sister has a daughter. Or has a son. Uh -huh. My wife's cousin. Yeah, first cousin. <laughs> okay. My wife's first cousin. <laughs> he was working somewhere. A very big company. Hmm? He was stealing their money. And they didn't know. He was living big. So when his wife was pregnant, he could, have, he could afford to send his wife abroad to go and give birth to a baby boy. And he stayed for two, three months and he paid the bills and all of that, he came down. Bought a car, everything was. It was a, if you see him, you know he's a big boy. He's living big. You know, these island guys living big. I called my wife, I said, you see this one? I said, his days are numbered. My wife said, well, I said his days are numbered. He will see life. I, he said, is, is it God? I said, God didn't tell me anything, but this is what he's doing. 
say you don't have a future. Do you know what? It wasn't long they discovered what he was doing. They sacked him. He left. He couldn't sustain. Now he doesn't have a job. The wife that went to her brother and brother, he's managing to see food to eat. He started talking. He said, remember what I told you from the beginning. So I, don't need to, I don't need to hear from God. You're not faithful in that which is another man. You are stealing from him and all. And then you want to, and he came out, he wanted to start his own. He wanted to start Oba. That is his Oba own business. <laughs> the motor scattered. What thing? It didn't even last for months and all of the end. And he's begging for money. Unrighteousness. I can give you countless not because I, my brother, my elder brother, the same, my elder, we are a football team. You know, so so that he's, I'm not a person, he's not a person, I'm telling you what my own, my elder brother, he, so, he was so prosperous, so much that he did a job with the World Bank project, gave him hundreds of millions and all of that. He felt that he now had money. He started, he's married. He started sleeping with the women that are not his wife. You know, when money comes. I call my brother, my other, other elder brother. I say, see my brother, Wilfred. He say, see Willie. We call him Willie. I say, see this one. He's a function of time. He's going to beg for money. Watch. Today. Today. Dilapidated. The son, the son, they call me asking me for money. I say, what about your dad? He say, nothing. He say, I They are had no come out that side, though. Righteousness. You don't like it. How many of you love righteousness? Then you will reign. You reign. In your family, in your home as a man, you are the king. Reign in your family as a righteous man. Don't treat your wife in the wrong. Don't try it. You see all these things that you do. You are quarreling and keeping water. Is that what you are doing as a king? Have I told you that I kneel down for my wife? If I offend, do I offend my wife? Yes. I get on my knees. I say, be merciful unto me according to, your, according to your loving kindness, according unto the multitude of your tender mercies. Behold, I have sinned against you. And it's against you that I have sinned. Somebody that was not happy now, <laughs> he started laughing. Somebody that was, he started laughing. He now carried me, he said, get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up. He will now hug us, I get up, get up, get up, we'll fall down. <laughs> Case closed. Has he made me smaller? No, no, no. I didn't hear you. Has he made me look a little shorter than I used to be? Instead, he has given me height, confidence, more love. And I do it in the presence of my children. you are talking about ego, ego, pride. Is it not? Pride will kill you. See pride, it will kill you. Everything is back. You snap. See my wife. She is the sugar in my tea, the butter in my bread. 
the pepper in my soup, the ice cream in my mouth. <laughs> if not seen, I chop her. Is that's what makes me young. Any day you say she's traveling, I will start boning. Why am I boning? Because I'm going to miss her. When, when are you going? How many? You are traveling now. Is it not on Sunday that you, is it not Friday, Saturday you are preaching? So why are you traveling on Tuesday? Why don't you travel on Thursday? You know what I'm, so that I will stay together. So that will just be a little two, three days I will miss, I will be able to manage. That's why. I didn't tell how. <laughs> but if you like, you can help me tell her. <laughs> I love my wife. It's making me happy. That's why we are happy. We hug each other. We, I'm not even... Some of you. We are not talking relationship now. We are tomorrow, if we have to. Yeah, you sit down. You are here. Your wife is at the back. We sit together. Everything we do it together. Love righteousness. Love it. It will pay you. But it will you you go so far. You go so far. Anyone that wants to lead a live a godly life will suffer persecution. Why I went through hell for 20 years in the ministry where I was, do you know why? Because I love righteousness. I stand by it. I don't like eye service. I don't like hypocrisy. Because you know as a leader, just like in this church here, because people are saying they are gossiping and all of that, you know what I will do? I will send, send secret agents. I will raise secret agents in, in the church. I will have a meeting with them and tell them, and say, penetrate inside. So you'll be getting information from me and be feeding me. I won't do it here. I'm not interested in what you say, what you didn't say. It doesn't bother me. Nobody tells me anything. But I know. Is it below the belt or above the belt? Both. Is it below or above? Is both. Both below and both. Okay, it's not anywhere. You steal. You lie. You cut corners. Tomorrow you want God to give it to me. If you have not been faithful in that which is, who shall? Who? Please, who is the person speaking? Who is the person speaking? Go when you go to your Bible, you see, is Jesus, these are direct words of Jesus Christ. So if you think you are smarter and wiser and better than him, continue. He lived by example. That is why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, he said it because he loved righteousness. He hated iniquity. So God did what? Anointed him over and above all his fellows. 
I'm doing ministry, I am pastoring the church effortlessly. Not manipulating people, not thinking about how to raise money. Not you are not because I think you don't like it. You like when somebody will manipulate you and draw life from you. That's what you want. But I don't do that. Is it because I don't need? I do. I pay bills. A lot. And people are demanding a lot. After some time, there are some time, if you see the kind of call they, they sent to me from baby, you saw my, my, my aunt, aunt, aunt um, uh, nephews and, uh, aunt and um, niece, niece and nieces. If you see the text, some of them have not spoken to me for the past one year or two years. He said, Uncle, good afternoon. He will stop. He will say, Uncle, good afternoon. I know where they are going to. I told my wife, I said, see this one. They started. He said, how do I know? I said, just don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. Let's leave it like that. Then, one week later, Uncle, please. I need so and so amount of money, 200,000 naira. This is my account number. He will send it. <laughs> I'll call my wife. I say, see, what did I tell you? I beg you, walk out your salvation with fear, with trembling. When you do, when you live a life of righteousness, the wind that are blowing, the righteous is as bold as lion. He gives you an outstanding confidence. When I'm behind the steering driving, I fear no police. I fear no military man. I fear no road safety. I fear no VIO. You say park. I will park. You will be one begging me that the parking is too much. I should slow down. You say park. I will enter. want to enter bush. You say it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I will stop. What do you want? I will ask them, what do you want? Is it driver's license? Is it the particulars? Which one? He said, let me see your driver's license. I pulled it and showed it. It's authentic. What about your papers? I pulled them. I give him. They're authentic up to date. He said, but what about this one that's written on it? Is that what you want? I open the whatever I gave him. You look at it. He said, okay. He said, your tire, uncle. I go to the tire. I said, the tire still have about two years to expire. Go and check all of them. You look at me, look at me. Say, anything for your boy. I said, come on, give me my papers. <laughs> Why am I talking like that? Why? Everything is intact. I made sure everything. What about your jack? see it. What about your fire extinguisher? What about your sea cushion? One day the other one was asking me about touch light. I said touch light. <laughs> you know some of you are driving cars without driver's license, expired driver's license. Some of you, your driver, their particulars are not complete. Two of us. And you are saying you love righteousness. You know why the Bible said that we are above the, the Bible said we are above the laws. Have you seen it in the Bible? We are not under the law, we are above the laws. Why are you above the law? He said because the laws are made for lawbreakers, for this, for that. I am not part of it. I am being wired and controlled from within, from inside. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am producing fruit of righteousness. Believe in it. Do it. Practice it. You know somebody like Daniel. The Bible said Daniel had an excellent spirit. When they connived everything and all of that to nail him and all of that, they tried everything, no way. They couldn't find him for it. Ah! A man that lived in the Old Testament. So at the end of the day, what happened? They said it's because this, the only way you can get him is through this is God. 
because he must worship his God as so and so time. So they went there to trap him. <laughs> hey. And they went and lied to the king and they made a decree that once nobody should pray at so and so time and all of that. And then when they got the king to sign it and all of that, they said, yes, now we are going to get him. So they went and positioned themselves there. They are watching. Hey, don't worry. He's remaining uh, 10 minutes. He will soon open the window. Just watch. They were waiting. So the moment it was 12 o'clock, for example, he just opened the window and began to pray. <laughs> they went and told the king. The king sent his men and they came and they found him. They brought him. He said, King, you have signed in your book, in your whatever. There's no going back on it. Because he loved Daniel. So eventually, he said, Daniel, that God that you are serving, let him deliver you. Enter. Lion's den. You know the history. You know the story. <laughs> the lion came when they threw Daniel inside the lion. The lion came and, and they say, Let me, uh, we have been feeling hot here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put their head on uh, Daniel and were having fellowship. In the morning, first thing in the morning, the king ran to the den. Daniel, has your God saved you? He said, I am here. <laughs> if you see the joy righteousness you can never go down never the righteous fall seven times how many times does he rise because you love righteousness you will never go down John chapter 15, verse 3. He said, you are clean. How? There are two cleansing agents, divine agents for cleansing. One is what? The blood of Jesus Christ. The second one, not the second in terms of importance. There are two of them. One is the blood. The other one is the word of God. They cleanse. The word of God is for the body. That is for the soul, your mind, your will, your emotion. That's what the word of God deals with. It doesn't deal with the spirit. The blood deals with the spirit. It cleanses the spirit because sin is a spiritual thing. Once it dents your spirit, it cleanses it. When you apply the blood, it cleanses it. It washes it. But you see, when you don't use the word to cleanse your soul, you find that you are living a besetting sin. That's the, that thing the, the Bible says, lay aside every sin and weight that doth easily beset us. It is always infesting you constantly. The way to deal with it is through the word. It's not only through fasting. It's, prayer will not stop it. Fasting will not stop it. What is going to remove it is the word. As you open yourself to the word, as you behold him with an open face as in a mirror, you are being changed. I will love it so well after a few weeks, after a few months, I start hearing testimonies and testimonies and testimonies. See, if you put this in into practice, you will be different. The reason why people, we attend conferences, you do whatever, they will tell you all those big, 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 big things. When they finish saying all those big things, you finish, you are still where you are. The problem is that we are not matching works with our faith. We still finish and then works are not, we just live carelessly. If you want to be a son, for example, find out what we have said about sonship. If you want to be a king and reign, 
there are things you need to do. You must adopt righteousness in everything that you do. In the way you transact your business, in the way you run your family, in the way you relate to your everything that you do, you must be on the righteousness basis. You must separate yourself. You must live a holy life. If you want to have authority and power, you must stay under authority. You must not usurp authority. You must not abuse authority. You must not instigate against the authority. So that your words will have power. If you say in Jesus' name, you will see things happen. Try it. Because I love, I love practicals. Try it. You will be the one that will call me and say, Pastor, so 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 thing happened. If you have been the one that are speaking against your pastors and all of that, go down on your knees and repent. He said, Father, I didn't know, but now I know better. Please have mercy on me. Will God forgive you? He will, sure. And then say bye-bye. Anybody that comes and starts telling you, eh, can you imagine? He said, hey, don't imagine. I'm not an imagination. <laughs> don't even give the person any opportunity to talk. I don't want to hear anything at all. I, don't. Father, we thank you for everyone. Thank you for the entrance of your life. Give Your word gives light. A lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. We bless you for everyone that have come here. Tomorrow we're going to be having the final meeting where the culmination of your grace and your glory and everything that you have designed for us will be released upon your own people. Father, we thank you. We bless you for every soul, every life here. Lord, we love just like you love everyone. We love the brethren. We love everyone, no matter how they are, no matter what happens. They are, we are all one. We are a project at work. You are still walking in each and every one of us. No one who rises up and become perfect. I remember in those days, my case was worse. But you took me, had patience with me and all of that. And that is why we are still growing. We have not even attained. I thank you for your patience. Thank you for your long suffering towards each and every one of us. May your name be glorified in their lives. May your grace rest upon them. May your face shine upon them. May your beauty be revealed in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and God bless you.